Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the Therapy Gel Wood AI, both the regular green, <laughs> I have a leaf here that fell off, the regular green form and then the variegated. This is commonly known as the string of hearts, uh, wherever you live, this is the, just a common name for it. And they actually come from South Africa in subtropical regions. So they actually thrive in kind of a moderate temperature that's not super hot. They also don't require a lot of humidity. In fact, too much humidity can set them back quite a bit, which we're gonna discuss later in the video in the care portion. These are in the Apocynaceae family. I apologize if I butchered that word, but it is in the same family as Hoyas and other amazing plants. And they're just known for these beautiful heart-shaped leaves that trail. This was actually the it plant in year, I think 2019, 2020. It started to decline a little bit over the pandemic and it no longer considered very popular. Really quickly about the care, they actually love to be in very bright indirect light, especially from the top. If you give them a light from, let's say a shelf where the top gets covered or maybe the back gets covered by a, a wall, they're actually getting less than ideal light conditions and they may get balding spots on the top, which is not a really good look on these guys. And I have to apologize, my specimens here are not looking great because I kind of neglect them. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to grow them nicely uh, in a bit. And also I've been growing these all as mother plants for propagation. So they're not in collector's conditions, if you know what I mean. And in terms of potting mix, it's actually very important for them. Uh, they actually can take a wide, wide variety of potting mix, but you do have to water them accordingly. So in a uh, general purpose potting mix, which is your cocoa peat, perlite, burnt rice hull, something that retains a bit of moisture, you do really want to back off with watering. And you can also put them in cacti and succulent potting mix, which is what they actually thrive better in because in nature they grow more in like rocky surfaces. When you do have them in that condition, you can water them quite frequently. I have these all grown in the rain, so they get rained on maybe every day and it's torrential rainy season now, so they're not exactly in the best shape, but they can actually survive in that conditions. Um, when you have them grown in better light, they'll give you uh, shorter internodes, bigger leaves, basically a nicer growth in general, but if you give them in low light, they're just gonna be lanky and sad. When you overwater them, they will rot, and that will usually come from the base. You'll see a lot of mushy leaves coming from the base, and the spread, uh, and the rot will usually spread you know, downwards. However, if you underwatered it, you will see that the leaves will start becoming really thin, really shriveled, uh, really wrinkly, usually starting at the tip of the plant. Now, in my case, some of these are more succulent than others, and my guess is that they are overwatered. So, these guys can actually survive if you, let's say, uh, have them propagated in a very wet condition and you kept them pretty wet, like this one is, they can actually survive. But then because they're getting a ready supply of water, they don't really need to store any water in the leaves, which is why they are actually uh, thinner in their leaves. So if you want to have those cute chubby succulent leaves, do give them a more consistent watering where it has a little bit of a drying out period of time. But keep in mind, these guys, they don't like to dry out too much for too long. So this is why it is a very difficult house plant to keep because you really need to get your watering game correct. And another setback for these plants is that they are very, very, very prone to mealybugs here. So because of their tiny vines, and look at the tiny, tiny patios that connect the leaves to the vines, uh, mealybugs can come in and destroy them overnight, literally. So just be mindful of that. You need to have very good pest control over these guys, especially here in my climate. I'm not sure about what they're like in the Western civilization, but seeing that they're in the Apocynaceae family, uh, which is the same as Hoyas, which are also Hoya, um, <laughs> they're also mealybug magnets. You just gotta be on top of the pest control on these. So check them often and do preventative measures with uh, mealybugs. I fertilize this the same with my other houseplants. I use both natural, which is the worm casting, but also slow release fertilizer. And sometimes I fertilize it with my uh, Grow More uh, foliar spray. Uh, they, they are not super heavy feeders, don't go overboard with the fertilizing, but they do need some kind of nutrients because they are actually fast growing if they are grown correctly in the good light conditions. So this is where they live currently and they're getting bright indirect light with maybe a little bit of west facing evening light. Uh, and I have two varieties here, this is the regular green and then there's the variegated ones. And actually they're a little bit overwatered, uh, they do get rained on 
whenever because as you can see the leaves here are actually very very thin so to encourage to suck it in like leaves you do need to give them a bit of drying out period of top, uh, period like over here this one has actually got a little bit more of a succulent leaf as you can see the vine like this it is actually wiser for you to wind it around the pot and let each of these nodes root into the pot you may have to pin this down with something because you don't want a bald top of the pot and of course top light will be very beneficial for them because they do need some light from up above so yeah you do need to have a really really strong top base this is where i missed out i should have actually wound this around the top i know i did before a long time ago but i haven't been really caring for this but you should keep the top full let them root into it and then they will actually branch out or you can also uh, wait for them to root and then you can cut each of these uh, vines so each of these nodes will activate and turn into its own plant when you see the mushy base like this look at the yellowing leaves that fell off in the bottom that's over watering all right so i've actually shown you some clips of how to propagate them be, uh, by basically having them trail so you can actually have this trail to the next pot over let it root and then cut it up but that's pretty self-explanatory but today we're going to be cutting this up and propagating it different ways I think the first way that I'm going to do it would be to water propagate it. As you can see here, this one was actually grown on the shelf, but these uh, lower leaves here, they were grown under the shelf. So the, the grill of the shelf was like this, and this grew under it. So it's getting very, very little light. And then, uh, what do you call it? It's getting very long vines, which gives us perfect opportunity to uh, water propagate this. So you want to take cuttings like this with a few leaves. I'm going to take one more. And these uh, variegated versions, they actually put out really beautiful pink new leaves when you sun stress it. When you're giving it a lot of light, it would be really, really gorgeous. So they used to be much prettier. I have seen much better uh, light of day in the past. But, you know, we're, hopefully we'll see some really cool ones in the update uh, later on. So we're going to take two vines and I can actually take off two of the lower leaves here. And I do want to talk a little bit about the anatomy of these guys. So basically, there's a node, and in the node you'll have two leaves, and then you have this middle section here, which will actually put out a tuber, and then it's going to go increase in size into a, a bulb-shaped tuber, and that's when the roots will appear, and then it will sprout a new plant. However, I hear that when you grow these out into an older specimen, they will put out this caudex. So I'm going to take off two of the lower leaves, because I'm going to propagate this in water, and I'm going to count on the roots to appear here in this node but i think they can appear everywhere if i'm not wrong i haven't propagated this in water for a very long time same with this one i'm going to take off the lower leaves because i don't want the lower leaves to be in water it may rot the plant so there's that yeah i'm going to just do two in water because that actually for me takes the longest time and acclim acclimatizing them into soil pretty challenging to do so i'm having general purpose potting mix here for this one and I'm going to just start cutting them up into single vines like this. And I'm just going to lay it on top like that. It's that simple. Uh, they call this the butterfly method. So uh, normally you would get a butterfly kind of like this. This is the top cutting. And you would just lay, you make sure that this is the bottom part here is touching the soil. Just lay it gently on it and you're all set. And then I'm going to continue with this one. So this is my general purpose potting mix. I actually uh, used it. This used to be for seaweed. I think I kept a lot of the food containers because I didn't want to throw them away. There's no drainage hole here. This is going to be grown completely indoors. So I can be completely on top of watering for these guys. They don't need a lot of humidity during propagation. Some people do want to cover them up with propagation tent, but I find that that might rot them a lot because in their natural habitat, they're, again, they're subtropical plants they're not used to being in 100% humidity uh, climates they may rot them so I just want to water them lightly keep the bottom here just a little bit humid but not soggy you will rot them if they get soggy wet and they need bright light when you're propagating them but not direct light and over here I actually have and this used to be for meat I think a meat uh, plastic tray that I covered with uh, my succulent and cacti potting mix that video I'm gonna link up above so you can see what it's made out of but a lot of succulents actually do grow well with this. I want to keep this a little bit more moist than that one, the general potting, because this one dries out uh, a lot faster. So I'm just going to leave some water down there and let the moisture get wicked up above. It's a bit tricky to, to understand, but when you're actually doing it, 
it's much easier to understand. So I'm gonna finish up with the rest of these. As you can see, there's quite a lot and I'll get back to you when I'm done. So I'm just gonna keep butterflying them. Even some of these with like only single leaf, not a problem. And the chubbier leaf that you have, the higher chance propagate of succeeding at this one's actually very limp it's even curling so this has a lower chance of survival technically speaking before you propagate you should actually uh, what do you call it you should actually fertilize them and make sure they're in good condition and these guys are not in the best condition just as a disclaimer I'm gonna leave that there and very quickly i want to quickly show you what a good retail size is this one this is a very good retail size we want them to be full pot like this and when i have an extra vine like this i do want to uh, kind of twist them around so they go back in the pot so they can root back in the pot when the top is full like this then that is when i'll start letting it trail down you don't want to let it trail down too early on in the game because you're gonna have some bare uh some naked top portion here, some balding top here with some scraggly little vines once you have this this plant is gonna take off like crazy it's gonna vine like crazy but it does take a bit of time here in indonesia these guys do not ship very well and the best size that you get them is at this size because when you get them as a very very mature uh, size they're used to that uh, condition lighting condition they're used to their watering condition so a lot of the times the plant if you get them as a big hanging basket a lot of times they don't make it in your condition they're not used to the sudden change because you just don't understand the watering that it had previously so if i were you if you've got a full pot you bought it brought it home go ahead and cut it up as insurance and you can keep the top like this and the vine will bush out even more for you so that's my recommendation for you and don't get them when they're still too young either because they're not established yet aha uh -huh. during propagation i did find a perfect example of a node anatomy so this is actually a node as you can see that on the left hand side the vine has appeared and there's also some aerial roots here so it's actually does put out advantageous roots on its own when the humidity is just right so yeah and this is already ready to take off actually and i found something else that's interesting if you look inside here there's that caudex you see that right in there this is from an older plant this is a mother plant how cute is that they do <laughs> a lot of caudex plants actually come from uh, south africa and this is i guess one of them and here's a fine example of the tubers look at this round little bulbs on each node here that is so cute oh and i forgot to mention they do flower and the flowers are really really beautiful it's trumpet like but yeah look at this really cute tubers that will grow in, into caudexes oh and an important fact oh my god i keep jumping all over the place today but these guys they're supposed to put out this milky sap because they're in the apostinaceae family and it can be irritating on the skin mine somehow i just noticed they didn't cut out those irritating white sap i think this is because they're not doing so well usually plants that are healthy you know they have a good immune system because the sap is actually a defense mechanism they take a quite a bit of energy to produce them uh, but these guys they're not coming in so hot so we're not seeing those sap but be careful when you're handling those all right it's actually about an hour later and as you can see i went a little bit overboard <laughs> so here's the variegated one and then the, i added some more that's going to be in water propagation these are all just the top cuttings and i decided to do that because the new leaves are so tiny it's hard to propagate the new leaves and then these are the green ones look at that from here i guess you can tell that the green ones probably grow a lot faster than the variegated ones so yeah, i have one in this setup here in my cacti succulent potting mix and i have these some of these were actually from the old pot i just decided to give them a makeover i added some cuttings in there so it's going to be a nice and lush pot i'm going to keep these indoors for now because i don't want to get them in the rain i want to try to grow them in pristine conditions for you guys so yeah and i may actually put like maybe a pot of this in the propagation box where the humidity is like a hundred percent just to see what happens welcome to a two weeks update i have pretty bad news one of the trays here seem to be suffering from some kind of fungal infection i actually see white fuzz along the potting mix along the medium and some as you can see here there's a little bit of a uh, mold situation so yeah a lot of these have rotted I have pretty bad feeling about this and it's actually placed right here next to the other tray and the other tray looks fine so I'm gonna separate them I'm gonna move them away this one actually looks pretty okay uh, and then this one is, is fine as well I don't know what happened to that one I may actually spray some fungicide uh, over these just to be sure these guys are also doing all right here all right so I'm, I'm outside and 
pardon all these pots, they're actually meant to be thrown away. It's a little bit of a backstory. So a lot of things have died, a lot of plants have died. People kept giving me plants and I kept buying new plants. I don't even remember most of these. I don't know what these pots used to contain because I have over, I don't know, 3,000 pots of plants now. And that is actually a real problem, you guys. I'm not proud of it. Um, but yeah, I have this mess. I'm gonna have the gardener help me clear this. But my purpose of bringing you out here is to show you how to use fungicide. This is basically antracol and dithane works just as well. So you just eyeball it. I just uh, put some in here in the mixer. And then give it a good shake. This works on your fungal infections on leaves as well. Or sometimes they can also leave, like in this case, on the top of the potting medium. So I'm just gonna spray this down. It's gonna leave a little bit of that white, creamy white residue. It's gonna dry up, but it's gonna take a lot of the fungus down with it. Welcome to a seven weeks update. Here are the mother plants. Everyone's putting out babies like crazy. They're pretty fast to propagate, I guess. Look at all these cute baby leaves coming out of this. So these are the ones I believe, I can't remember everything I did before, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, but I think I stuck a lot of the cuttings back in here. And literally a lot of them took and they're putting out these cute little babies. And this one as well, this is doing all right. It's recovered from the cut and it's bushed out really well. I don't see any yellowing or rot. So this is kept away from the rain and it's getting very, very good bright indirect light with a teeny, teeny bit of direct light. The variegated ones, they re absolutely require it and they would do, they would give you this pink blush when you give them a bit of direct sunlight. This is another mother plant here, but I'm really excited to show you the baby. So let's just get to it. Hang on, this one's cute too. Look at, I love watching these baby leaves just appear out of thin air. So let me show you the babies real quick. Close your eyes and I us open them now. <laughs> so these are the propagates. Look at them. This is not doing so well only because it's not getting light. The window is actually that way. It's growing the wrong way. And I remember there were a few times when it was actually a little bit underwater here. But as you can see, everybody is taking off. Everyone is putting up all these baby, baby leaves that I really love to watch. Um, this is the one that was infected. And I don't think, yeah, they did not make it at all. This had fungal attack. The ones in water actually put out a lot of roots. And I think it's, it kept growing and growing, but the leaves are still relatively small. And yeah, I'm gonna be potting this up soon. And you wanna give it a very fast draining potting mix. And I actually re recommend to water this with this water because they're used to the condition of this water at first. And then slowly back away with watering until it can dry out completely. Because now these are water roots, so you don't want it to severely dry out too suddenly. This one is particularly cute. I love this. This used to be for seaweed, actually. This is my sea Japanese seaweed container. <laughs> and it's put out some baby leaves. And I sh actually should face them towards the sun like that. They would really love that when you give them better light. And this is the variegated ones that I just propagated on a tray. And it's pushed out a lot of baby leaves. I believe some of them did rot off. So maybe this is not the best way going forward. I actually did not pay close attention to this. I had someone care for this. But I know that we kept it relatively humid here. It's maybe about 70, 80% humidity. They don't like it too humid, by the way. They are not tropical plants, but it will help encourage root growth. And we also do water this uh, very lightly, almost every day. We just keep the bottom of the tray a little bit moist. But it's actually doing all right. It is pushing out tons and tons of little babies. But they do much better, I think, in these cute little pots here. I've got one more to show you. This one, I actually stuck one into the prop box just because I can. Um, it's doing all right, actually. Look at all this baby growth. But then look at how leggy they are and how small the leaves are. They're actually, I, don't, I wouldn't say that they're having the best time of their lives at this point. It's probably looking for light. And these guys are actually light loving plants. And that high humidity, I don't even know if they like it. Actually, this is like 90 to 100% humidity in there. But it is doing well. I'm sure it'll help them root well, but I just don't think for the longevity of the plant that they would actually appreciate being in here for too long or ever. 
I guess that's it for today's video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm a botanist on Instagram. Feel free to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations. Oh, and I'm gonna start moving these outside and give them better light soon I have the space. And uh, reach out to me if you have any questions about plant care and propagations. I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next one. Bye.